Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and welcome to the DM test drive of the 2021 Kia Rio Hatchback. We've had a lot of fun throwing this car around this week because this thing comes in at $20,000 out the door Gets over 40 miles per gallon. In fact, it got 46 miles per gallon in our highway fuel economy testing. It's got a remarkably decent sound system, especially for the price point. And it's a hatchback. It's a small, lightweight hatchback car. What more isn't there to love? Well, actually, it doesn't have a manual transmission option, so that's something not to love. But the CVT is not awful. So today we're gonna take a look around the car and then take it out for a test drive on our loop. Of course, being a hatchback, Party's in the back. You've got all this room for activities. I know Chris Brower was able to fit his entire body in here, and I have no reason to doubt him. In fact, let's give that a try, but maybe with folding the seats down. Let's see if you needed. Oh, that's not a good sign. Let's. <laughs> At the end of the day, this is a subcompact after all. Let me just. There we go. Push that down. See if we get a decently flat load surface in here. You can take this. A little thingamajig off, this little cover. Maybe. Oh, you really gotta push for that. Get that out of there. Can you lay down in the back of the Forte hatchback? Ooh, that is, that is a fake floor right there. That does not hold a bunch of weight. And uh, answer is no, you would not want to be sleeping in the back of the Forte hatchback. So, you know, you can live that hatch life to an extent, but maybe not as much in a, as in a compact hatch. Still can do a lot of hatchy type things. Get this back put on here. I'm gonna get it on properly, because if we don't, it'll rattle the whole drive. There we go. Easily done, put this back. The looks are give and take for me. I do like the 15 inch wheels. I like seeing all that sidewall and you'll see as we get on the test loop, it definitely helps with the ride. Other than that, it's kind of a, eh, not ugly, but not exactly a uh, inspiring design in my eyes. I think it kind of looks like it's got a mustache, this grill. Get that pulled forward so we can get this seat up the proper way. And there we are in the back. Tons of room for activities. Obviously the seat is still pushed forward a little bit, but even if it were to come back, it'd have knee room. I've got head room, which is very important. Perfectly livable place to be. You got a USB-A port, no air vents. That's a bit of a bummer. No flip down armrest, but you could probably get a rear facing car seat back here if need be. But getting into the front, manual seat controls, those back. You got no telescope steering wheel, just up and down. Let's pop the garage door open Get this thing out on the road. Now, when I shut the garage door, it had just kind of finished raining, but I have no idea what it's gonna be like now. Let's see. Oh, it looks like it's dry. All right. This blue is actually called sporty blue. So that's uh, pretty sporty. I like the big shifter. It works, it feels good in the hand. Out into the sunlight, you can see it's a fairly handsome interior. Nice symmetry here. I like the easy to use HVAC controls. You even got auto climate control if that's how you want to roll. Missing some wireless charging because this thing does have wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, which is huge. It's, it's super nice to have, especially in a car at this price point, but we don't have any wireless device charging to go with it. You kind of still have to plug your phone in or else the battery's just gonna go blue. For other practical storage bits, you've got a door pocket. You've got a center console, decent uh, little bit of rubberized finished here, but this part is hard. So I noticed on our highway fuel economy test, my elbow was starting to get a bit sore. Not a ton of frills, but still a pretty decent car to drive. I like the steering ratio. In fact, I like the weight of the steering in general. Back a little far, it's screwed up. 
No navigation, but since you've got wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, it's not the end of the world. I do think it's funny that the gauge cluster is pretty much the same thing you get in a $45,000 Kia Telluride. So it's kind of, kind of a good thing for the Rio and not a good thing for the Telluride, but that gives them something they can implement in the next year or two for the Telluride to make it that much sweeter. Let's hit the speed bump. Definitely get that short wheelbase hop sort of feel, but this thing is built solid. Not all CVTs are the same, and this is a perfect example of that. This thing pulls nicely off the line, and then when you want to drive it aggressively, it responds well, and even though they put in some fake shifting, it's kind of cool how immediate the fake shifting is, and it does allow you to stay right in the power band. You'll notice we haven't mentioned horsepower figures yet, and that's because for a commuter car like this, horsepower shouldn't really matter. And yes, I know some of you want to know, it's it's like 140 something, I'll put it up here on the side of the screen, but it's a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated inline four and it gets the job done. It sips fuel and it propels the car, that's what you need in this class. One thing I will say is I'm not a big fan of the blinker sound. It screams cheap car. They could have done something just a little bit lower, lower pitch, a little bit less tinny sounding. We've gone a long way. But you can tell that's, yeah, we're nitpicking at this point, which says pretty good things about the car. Also, I was perfectly comfortable in the seat over our highway fuel economy test. So that's something that bodes well for this car. Getting away from that roundabout, you can see, put the throttle down a little bit and it sort of just sits at the right RPM, pulls itself up to speed. It doesn't make a lot of noise. This thing's actually fairly refined inside. Nice big digital speed readout, I like that. In fact, I would say they could kind of just get rid of the, uh, the digi uh, analog tachometer right there, except when you change screens here, you lose your digital speed. So let's hit the sport button, drop it into manual, downshift into what they call third. Stability control off. Let's freak out some Nissan Maximas. Look at that holding gear. That's funny. leave it in third and it'll just sit and scream at 6,000 RPM. It will shift eventually once you get up to the top, but look how quick that is. I hit it, and it's right away. And you've got a manual e-brake so you can do things like that. <laughs> it still totally killed the power. That's fun. You know, with cars like the Golf and the Focus and the Fiesta, and uh, well, we still have a Civic hatch, but the Fit all going away. And is the Yaris gone yet? I don't know. If it's not gone yet, it's probably going to be gone soon. With all those cars going by the wayside, it's fun to get in a car like this that's pretty simple and pretty fun. And decently satisfying. I would seriously consider buying a car like this I needed to buy a new car just because you're getting so much of what you need and not much else. And that's great because you're only paying 20 grand for it. And you're getting a huge warranty. That's some understeer. <laughs> uh, but when your limits are so much lower like that, you can do things and not be in, uh, you know, in a, a lot of trouble. You guys see me go around that corner all the time and big powerful supercars and sports cars and it's like, I'm not gonna push it that low or push it that hard, but in this, yeah, why not? Let's see what happens. What else can we say about the interior? You get push button start, proxy key, at least with this technology package. I don't know if you have to pay for that. Materials are honestly not bad. This thing is 
pretty solid. Door handles feel nice, steering wheel feels okay. Here we go, you guys ready for Screech Fest? <laughs> oh, that's fun. And there we are, 70 miles per hour. Turn off sport mode, turn on the Kia active lane keeping system, which works quite well. Not as good as Hyundai, but it's decent. It won't perfectly steer you the way Hyundai's will, but it'll keep you in the lane. Let's see as we come here. This is a loud concrete section of highway, but still not too bad in this car. So you see, it's going around this corner and it's actually bringing the car into the middle of the lane, but then you see how it comes back and it has to re-correct. It doesn't lane center as well as Hyundai does. Hyundai will actually keep you right in the center of their lane here, but uh, that's no big knock on Kia because one, this car costs 20 grand, and two, they don't claim that it'll do lane centering, so I mean, it's, it's just, it is what it is. It's nice to have anything at all. What you don't have is adaptive cruise control, and it's interesting that you can have uh, lane keeping without the cruise control. Look at how well it's taking these bumps. I mean, there's no creaks, there's no rattles, bunch of sidewall on the tire, so it's soaking up a lot of the sound and the bump. This car has a lot of bandwidth. If there's any big downside to it, is that it doesn't have the maturity factor as something like the Volkswagen Jetta we recently reviewed. You could get into a base Jetta for not too much more than this, and, well, actually it would be a decent bit more than this, but still, you can get into a base Jetta for a little bit more than this, and people will be like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a mature car. You could be a 35-year-old businessman driving a Jetta, and, people aren't going to completely stick up their nose. But a Kia Rio, eh, don't get me wrong, Kias are coming a long way. But the image, for people who care about image, that's still going to be a little tough. Hopefully Kia can continue to erode that with cars like the Stinger and the Telluride and continue to push themselves up market. But something like the Kia Rio is going to have a tough time beating that. And, and even with the looks, I mean, a, a Jetta just looks and comes off as more mature and, and a better choice for someone going that route than something like this. But the Rio manages to still have a little bit of fun and everything you need in a car. Now if they could just fix that blinker. Great turning radius as should be expected from a small car like this. Backup camera is okay. It's a good size, but resolution's not fantastic. All right, so there we are, the Kia Rio. Good little car, and thank goodness that Kia is still making it. I'm sure its days are numbered, but for now, it's a good choice. Thank you all so much for watching. GoPro decided to bite the dust right there at the end, but that's what cell phones are for. Thank you all so much for watching. If you wanna see more on the Rio hatch, we've got our fuel economy test and our sound system review, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, Drive on. Mm -hmm.